Welcome back to Building Belisario, a podcast for students by students, diving into the testimonies of people within the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications here at Penn State. Right now, I'm joined with Destiny. Destiny, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy to get started with school. <laughs> great, great. That's right. It's about to start soon. We're recording um, August 16th, so we only have about a week until we go back to the classroom. Um, are you ready for that? Um, I'd like to say I am. I like to be in the busyness of things, so I'm excited to get back in the swing Sweet. of all of it. Yeah, awesome. Um, so go ahead and just introduce yourself, um, your name, where you're from, and what you're involved with, and your major. Yeah, so I'm Destiny Sanchez. I'm from Stony Brook, New York. I went to Ward Melville High School, and I'm a junior, um, incoming junior at Penn State in the Belisario College. Um, I'm a broadcast journalism major. Um, I am a Button Waller Fellow as well as a Belisario College Fellow. And some of the organizations I'm a part of, I'm the producer of Penn State Sports Night. I'm the vice president of the Association for Women in Sports Media. I am a host for 46 Live. I'm a content contributor and podcast host of the Penn State Sports Business Conference. And I believe that's Oh, and I'm a Big Ten sideline reporter, Big Ten student youth sideline reporter. Um, nice. So I sideline and report for various um, Big Ten broadcasts for, at Penn yeah. State. Sweet. All right. So um, before we dive into all those awesome experiences, um, tell us about the classroom. So as a broadcast journalism student, um, what classes have you taken? Who are some honorable mention professors? Uh, but just tell us about like what you do and what you're experiencing there. Yeah. Um, so... Um, in the beginning, like freshman year and a little bit of sophomore year, my class sizes were definitely on the bigger end, just to get um, like gen eds out of the way um, and classes like that. But a lot of my comm specific classes um, under journalism had like 14 to 20 people, I'd say, in each class. So it was definitely a smaller size, which I like because I was able to know my professor and know my peers. Um, some of the classes that I've taken, um, my first like journalism class I took was news writing, Com 260W with Audrey Snyder. And that class really taught me how to become a news writer and write in news style, um, AP style. Um, so that was a great way because um, as much as I want to be an on-air talent, to be a good journalist, you have to be a good writer as well. So it was great to um, get that knowledge. And this year, some classes I'm excited to take um, I'm taking TV reporting, which is all you know, making packages and going out and filming. I'm taking a podcasting class, which I'm starting to get more into podcasting, which I'm excited about with our beautiful brand new studios. Um, so I'm excited to learn more about, you know, preparing for a podcast, writing for a podcast. Um, I'm also taking In the Game, which is almost like a sports center, but a class. And um, it's a three hour class, but the whole time you're planning the entire show for the um, whole semester. So um, I feel that I have like a wide range of um, knowledge within journalism. And as I'm getting older, um, I can focus more on sports and also broadcasting. So I feel like I'm getting a well-versed knowledge of journalism with a few classes that I've taken so far. Yeah, so from my experience in Belisario, like not only do we have these like great opportunities um, in the classroom, um, like you were talking about, but we have them outside the classroom and they're open to everybody pretty much as soon as you start as a first year as well. So talk about some of your involvements that you mentioned. Um, specifically, let's hear about Penn State Sports Night. That's a big one for you. Absolutely. Um, Sports Night was the first club I joined at Penn State. And you said it like right when you step foot on campus, you can be involved. And I think Penn State Sports Night is a perfect example of that. Um, it I came to Penn State knowing I wanted to work in broadcast journalism, but not sure like on camera. I love the behind the scenes part because that's what I was well versed in high school, but um, I would never been on air before. And I came to Penn State I saw Penn State Sports Night on Org Central and that was the first one I joined and the environment was so welcoming um, the whole purpose of the club is to try new things and you know 
there's no auditions like you can if you want to be on air you can try it you can love it you can hate it and then go back behind the camera like it was just I really felt that I could spread my wings a little bit in that club and try new things um and I did and now on-air broadcasting is my entire life um it's all that I do um, and I owe a lot to my growth as an on-air broadcaster because of that club. And that was day one and it was COVID. So like, imagine that, like, that was just a crazy time, but still like, I was able to get those on camera reps because the practice makes perfect with anything. And I was getting constructive criticism and I just felt that, um, Penn State Sports Night is a big reason why I, where I am today and the other opportunities that I've had. So, um, and I try as a producer, I try and provide that environment that I had my freshman year to the incoming members. So I think Penn State Sports Night, it has a special place in my heart and I can't wait to get back in the studio and make some more segments. But um, yeah, it's just a really fun club and it was Monday nights. You know how everyone says they don't like Mondays? I love Mondays because of sports nights. So yeah, that club has a special place in my heart. Awesome. Sweet. So did that open up the opportunity to be the sideline reporter for the Big Ten youth reporting? Um, um, I, yeah, I'd say um, the skills that I it's up, like obtained in Penn State sports night um, opened up doors for something like Big Ten Student U. Um, I actually um, interned for Penn State Athletics um, the fall of my freshman year. And um, through that, I um, was able to network within Penn State Athletics. And um, through various conversations, I was able to um, become a Big Ten, U, Big Ten Student U sideline reporter. Um, so that really came through networking um through you know being persistent um and you know learning how to send an email and you know things like that and phone calls which um i think the skill level i definitely obtained from Penn State sports night and then the big 10 student u was um through networking and through other experiences yeah sweet so um you had an internship this summer um so tell us about that Yes, yeah, so this summer I was with the Charlottesville Tom Sox. It's a summer collegiate baseball team down in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, it's in the Valley League. Um, this year they actually won the championship, so it was a lot of fun to experience that. I was a multimedia journalist, so I did a lot of different things. Um, I was, uh, I took pictures, I wrote articles, I did play-by-play -play in color, which I never did before. And then I did it and it was so much fun. <laughs> um, I did had on-air um, opportunities as well through the, um, it was called Tom Sox Weekly. It would be put on their YouTube channel, um, just reviewing the week and seeing what's ahead. Um, I got to do player and coaches interviews. So I really um, was able to build my journalism skills in a lot of different areas. Um, being a multimedia journalist and also learned how to ask good questions in interviews. I did a lot of interviews with players and coaches and that really taught me how to ask the right question and you know make them comfortable like in front of the camera. Um, so and that internship um, I was able to know about it because <laughs> I'm from New York so like I was in Virginia like completely different um, states but I found out about that through Bob Martin um, in the career services department um, and he's amazing with as all of his emails that he sends out um, one of those was that and there was a few Penn Staters down there last summer and they had a great experience and I had a great experience down there as well so that was what I did this summer. <laughs> awesome so when applying to internships like did you just apply for one or how did that happen and if you got more than one offer how did you decide that this was the one that you wanted. Yeah, so I applied maybe upwards of 20 to 25 internships starting in November before that summer. Um, it was a grind. It was a lot of, um, you know, research and the emails that Bob sent and, you know, being persistent with, you know, keeping in contact with the people that are hiring for the internship. And a lot of time I never even heard back. So a lot of times it was a no. Um, there, 
but there were some yeses. I'd say maybe like out of the 20 to 25, maybe like five yeses. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, a, it's definitely tough. Um, and it's, you can't like get too discouraged about it because all you need is that one yes to open up a lot of different doors. So um, it was um, definitely, I think the Penn State pipeline helped a lot with the Charlottesville Tom Sox, which is amazing with um, how many alumni are all over the place that love to help other Penn Staters. Um, so I think that, you know, be, I learned with, through the process of applying internships, how to send a good email, how to send a good follow-up email. I utilized Bob and Julie for um, resume reviews and cover letter reviews. So a lot of using your resources and, you know, practice makes perfect with everything and not getting discouraged if you, when you get the, a no, because all you need is one, the one yes. Right. Yeah, there's, I applied for a bunch. I'm in more of the radio area mm -hmm. and they, I applied for a bunch and I got a lot of no's as well. Um, but we also have to remember that we're going into our junior year. So a lot of the classes that are like required and what we need to know, we haven't been taught yet and we're going to. Mm -hmm. So those opportunities might open up later. Um, but that Penn State pipeline that you talked about, it's a true thing, is that networking mm -hmm. program that Penn State has because of our um, 700,000 living alumni network. Um, so that, I just think that's really cool. Um, so our last question is you're warm, you're warm and fuzzy. Why did you come to Penn State? Why did you choose to be here? Why do you choose to stay here? And specifically Belisario, what makes Belisario special for you? Absolutely. Um, I applied to Penn State. It's so funny. I applied to 10 schools and I applied to Penn State because my guidance counselor told me to. <laughs> he thought it would be a good fit for me. And that's what I did. And, you know, I, it wasn't like big on my radar at first. And then when I visited and I visited in January, it was snowing, but I still was like, oh my goodness, like this is a special place. And it was one of the, also one of the first schools that I heard back from when I applied. Um, and so I was like, oh, maybe, maybe this could be somewhere I go. So I went and visited. I visited schools all over the East Coast. And the one thing that I felt from Penn State was that my the staff and the faculty will know my name in Belisario. Like it was just, they made it me feel that I wasn't gonna be a number. I made me feel that I was going to be supported and that my success was their success. And they want to be a part of helping me get there. Um, I really felt that um, they wanted to know who I was, what I, my dreams are, and help me on that way to getting there. And I just felt they made it very clear that they want that out of, for my experience. And I just felt like no other school, like, harped big on that. And I was like, wow, like, this is impressive. And, you know, I visited the campus and I at that time the media center wasn't built yet so it was like a graphic of it and I was like oh my gosh that's so cool and it's very cool it's a beautiful building by the way <laughs> um but it just you know from Gary Abdullah the dean of diversity and inclusion Emily Miller um Bob Martin Julie Miller it was just all of them really made it clear that they want me to be successful and be a part of that and it couldn't, it has held true to this day from this, I'm going into my third year. I feel so supported by the staff and um, I don't know, I couldn't be more grateful. I've had some great opportunities because of um, their help and I really just feel at home here. So I think that's the big reason why I picked to come here, the support and the love that I felt from everyone involved in the Belisario College. Yeah, it is truly a special place. Um, and after a while, you get to start knowing everybody. And I even felt that like they wanted us to succeed. And I still feel that today, which is really important for a university. They can keep their promises. But thank you so much, Destiny, for sharing your awesome, awesome story. I'm always blown away from hearing what you're up to. Um, but thank you so much. And if you do have any questions about uh, Destiny's specific major, or you want to reach out to somebody um, and ask some more questions, feel free to reach out to Bellasar, and we'd love to help you find those resources. But thank you so much and have a great day.